Hello and welcome to the United Man. My name is Shane and this is the Manchester United transfer news. Looks like Daniel James is on his way. So, Daniel James. So, it looks like he's on his way to Manchester United, Carrington, to have his medical today. Um, obviously, it looks like this deal was due to be done quite a while back. But with the passing of his dad, understandably, needed some time. Manchester United gave him that space, rightly so. But looks like he wants to get the deal done as soon as possible now, with the medical being done today. Um, in multiple sources, it's been reported that he's, he's actually arrived at Carrington. So hopefully we can get this deal done today, over the line. One transfer done, in the bag. Thank you very much. Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Right, now let's move on to what type of role he'd actually have with Manchester United. Um, I believe in the initial, it would more likely be that he will be an impact substitution. He played his debut season with Swansea last year, or season gone. He's an exciting talent. He has that raw confidence in his uh, dribbling ability and that devastating attribute, what you call speed, is just outright speed. Uh, you know, some of the highlights I've seen, I only watched him in one half of a live game this season. And the speed the, the, the kid's got, it's, it's, it is literally scary. And some of the highlights, as I said, I've watched of him, it almost seemed like it was unfair when he was going up against some of the defenders because he'd, he'd be five yards behind him, knock the ball past them a full 10 yards in front of them and get to it way before them. And it just looked as if, you know, you've got an adult playing football and running past kids. It just looked unfair. It'd be interesting to see what he can actually bring in terms of performance levels uh, to the Premier League. It's, it's, it's fascinating, but Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has an ethos, young, creative, fearless and fast. He wants pace in the attack and let's be honest, pace devastates. Should his performances warrant a start some way down the line, I don't believe Oli will be adverse to starting him at all. I think it will be a case of he comes in, he does his, his best, showcases what he can do and Oli will have to manage, you know, in terms of what he does in terms of his minutes. But I wouldn't be surprised if a third into the season, if his if his levels end up what I believe it could be, I wouldn't be surprised if he ends up a starter and taking that left left sided spot. Now he can play on the right hand side, but predominantly where he's played most and most effectively has been on the left side of the pitch as an out and out winger. So that we have not had at Manchester United really and truly since Giggs and Beckham. Out and out wing play, just, I'm gonna beat you, I'm gonna go past you. So if he can bring that kind of ferocity to the left wing, I, I don't know, the sky's the limit. So obviously, it's not just Manchester United that we're interested in, in him either. It was rumored that there was late bids from uh, Monaco, Leicester, Everton as well that were also interested, but, for Oli to go after this lad and you know make him his first sign, and he would have been signed earlier, I believe, before this international national league. It, I, I, I believe we're onto something here, and I believe Oli, more importantly, and Manchester United are onto something. So let's let's see. But it's exciting to see that you know we've finally looking like we're getting something over the line. So long may that continue and. Let's keep it going. Let's not stop there. Let's keep building. But guys, please let me know what you think about Daniel James. I know there'll be some Manchester United fans that wouldn't have seen much of him. There will be some that have seen him maybe a bit more than others and some that will watch some highlights. But let me know what you think about him and his chances of indeed getting into the starting lineup and or whether he's going to start. I, I, I doubt he'll start, but let me know if you think he might start or if he's going to be impact substitution or even if he's... I doubt that Oli's bringing him to sit in the uh, under 23s. I very much doubt that. So he'll be in the squad. But let me know what your thoughts are on that. And don't forget, guys, if you like what I'm putting out there for you and want to see more, don't forget to subscribe and like and don't forget to share it as well. And click the notification button as well so you get notified when I'm releasing more videos as well. Moving on. Bruno 
Fernandes. Now, for some of you, you would have seen him play for Portugal uh, yesterday with the 3-1 win over Switzerland. Now, I'm of the mindset, bear with me, I'm of the mindset that when you have Cristiano Ronaldo in your lineup, in your starting lineup, it's hard for others to shine because one, if you don't get in the ball or any opportunities, he's throwing his arms up in the air and, you know, all that jazz. But he's quality. He is Cristiano Ronaldo. So it's hard for pe other people to shine. Now, Jao Felix also made his international, full international debut. Uh, but Bruno Fernandes, he looked like he wanted to play. He was play he, every now and then he's trying little one-twos where he was coming in because he was predominantly played on the right-hand side. Uh, and he was coming in once or twice, trying little ones and twos, link, link, linking up, trying to, you know, drop to shoulder, tried a couple of shots. He was crossing the ball a fair amount as well from that right-hand side, which was interesting to see. A lot of Portuguese sources now are saying, look, it looks like Man United are in pole position and they're looking to get the deal done as soon as the Nation League concludes. Jao Felix, as, as I mentioned before, made his full international debut as well. So, you know, it was interesting to see, but he was played sort of more up top alongside Cristiano Ronaldo and even more so when Cristiano Ronaldo was dropping off to the wings. It was just interesting to see him, um, you know, live for a change as well. It's been a while since I've seen him live. It was obviously Benfica in Europa League since I personally last seen him. It's been reported that it's, it seems as though it's pretty much a two horse race. However, I've seen reports from Spanish newspapers that Atletico Madrid are heavily interested and involved in him as well. So let's see how that goes. But I would be surprised if we sign both Bruno Fernandes and Jao Felix. I can more see, and me personally would more, you know, at this present time lean towards Bruno Fernandes, but the ability that Jao Felix has is unquestionable, but the price fee, you know, is a lot. It's his release clause after all. So let's see how Maynard will go with that one. It broke yesterday in regards to Kylian Mbappe handing in a transfer request. I mean, okay, so there's there's dreaming and there's, there's, there's Mbappe. So that's one level above dreaming. So yeah, whether it's true or not, he wouldn't be coming to Manchester United, even if, I believe we'd qualified for the Champions League. It looked like we were challenging next season. I still don't believe we'd be going to Manchester United. Say, for example, we were, we were in Liverpool's position. I still think he's more likely to go to Real Madrid than anywhere. There's very few clubs that could actually afford his services. We would be one of those, but nah, I, I couldn't see him come to Manchester United. That's a bit of a pipe dream. Uh, as I say, even if he was in a much better position, I still would see him going to Real Madrid all day long. As much as we'd like to you know, fantasise over the fact, oh, Mbappe, Mbappe, don't get me wrong, if he, listen, if he is available, Woodward's got to do his due diligence and do whatever he can to try and sign him. But I don't believe that will be the case, unfortunately. So let's see. Delit, this guy keeps dropping hints, you know, little cryptic messages here and there. Now, all I'm going to say in, on this, uh, Delit, is, look, the longer this goes on, the better opportunity we have. If he was going to Barcelona, it would have been sewn up a long time ago, like his Ajax, former Ajax teammate, Frankie de Jong. It hasn't been uh, for various reasons. As most, most of you know, he, he's asking for more money. Barcelona don't want to pay that more money. They're putting off on the table and said, take it or leave it, basically. Now, it's come, <laughs> it's come out as quite funny that apparently Barcelona have resorted to insults such is their worry that they resort to insults. Now, you know, this statement may or may not be true, but apparently it's been quoted, apparently it's been quoted, source unconfirmed, that Barcelona uh, representative has come out and said, Manchester United's circumstance at the moment is akin to the Chinese league. So if the lit went there, he'd be sacrificing ambition and his development. Now, <laughs> May United, they're in a state, no bones about it. But it's it's for, to me, it's very funny that Barcelona are resorting to having to drop those kind of comments and one-liners because that says we're fully into it. We're fully, you know, making headway into this deal. And they're very worried 
that there's a and there's a strong possibility that he can come to, to Manchester United. So that for me was you know that was hmm, okay. That puts a lot of weight behind all the rumours, all the speculation, purely because for some, for a Barcelona representative who's up there, he's got no business saying anything about anything, has come out and said, look, Manchester United, why do you want to go there? They're just like the Chinese League. It's all about money, money, money. You know, there's no quality there. There's no development. There's, you know, there's no ambition if you're going to Manchester United. What are they going to do? That says to me, they're worried. So... Hey, come on! If if that's the case, that's brilliant. That means we're we're well in the way. We're well in with a chance for his services. So, and I believe, as I stated before, and had, sorry, as he stated before, he's not adverse to the Manchester United leading the Manchester United rebuild. That says a lot, you know, about his character. He he's a leader anyway, as everyone knows. But it says a lot about his character that he wants to go into somewhere. He's not. He, he possibly even the fact that he's just considering it. He could easily have signed for Barcelona already and, like you said, be guaranteed titles, you know, between themselves and Real Madrid. But he's looking at, I want to be the man. I want to be, you know, I've got to be going honest, mate. So, you know, that that to me is, is, is a telltale sign. So that's really interesting that that's come out from the Barcelona camp. Now, those quotes may not be exactly on the money, but it's interesting that, you know, they're resorting to insults of some nature. So I really want to see what how that develops on that. Um, in terms of people leaving, obviously there, there's been Buffon who's left PSG. There'd been rumours of De Gea, well, he's been linked with PSG already. Now the fact that De, um, Buffon's left PSG, that obviously leaves the opportunity for them now to, well, they're going to need a number one goalkeeper. And... As I said, they've already been linked with David De Gea. I think De Gea, if he does leave, he'd want to go to Real Madrid. That's my opinion. But let's see. Anyway, guys, that was a quick roundup of what's what's been going on over the last few days. And obviously what's happening with Daniel, Daniel James. Guys, let me know what you think. Um, yeah, because it seems to be hotting up now. Once, once international break's done, let's see what happens. Hopefully we get some a lot more movement and we go from there. Anyway, guys, take care. And don't forget, subscribe if you like the content. Take care. See you. Bye.